All right. So today I'm going to talk about nuclear the the nuclear diameter, and then we'll I'll move on to look at nu what we call the nuclear radius, and then move on to look at actually well how dense is an an, an an a nucleus compared to the density of an atom, for instance. Okay. So first of all, let's have a look at what we've got from previously. Now, when we looked at the previous part, we worked out that nuclear the nucleus diameter is approximately 10 to the minus 14, 10 to, 10 to the minus 15, that sort of scale. I think the smallest one is about 2 femtometers, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 15. So that's pretty tiny, especially when you compare it to an approximate atom diameter, which is we, what we know as an angstrom, which is 10 to the minus 10. So your nucleus is taking up a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of your atom. And if you calculated the volume of the nucleus and the volume of the atom, you'd see it was a tiny fraction of the volume as well. Okay. So, before, obviously, what we calculated, if we want to get an uh, estimate of the diameter of a nucleus, we need to uh, send an electron with a certain wave, uh, a de Bruyne, de Bruyne wavelength, and then work out what the angle is, and then we can calculate the diameter. That's really rubbish and time-consuming, because what we want is a way of just going, I know this information, This it's this atom, what is its nuclear radius? And there is a way of doing this. So, what you'll find is if you do an experiment, so in an experiment you always draw a graph, and if we plot the nucleon number, which we usually give the symbol A, against the radius of it, what you will find is that the graph goes something like this. So first of all, as you increase the nuclear number, the A, you get a rapid rise in nuclear radius, and it sort of like curves off until you get into quite a flat section. Okay. That graph's not particularly useful at getting us a relationship. So what you can do is obviously you can plot a log graph. And if you did that, what you'd work find out is that your the power involved in this graph is a third on is a third. So let's have a look. If we plot the nuclear radius against the cube root of nuclear number instead, we get a nice straight line graph, which is wonderful because we can use it to work out a whole bunch of things. It's not actually a straight line, it's but it does approximate to a straight line. It's the best approximation we have. So what you find from this is that the radius is proportional to the nuclear number, which we call A. I'm not putting the units in there. It's like we don't measure it in amps. We've got the nuclear number, and it's to the power cubed. Now, that's good, but that's still not allowing us to calculate the radius for a given nu nucleon number. So what we need to do is work out well, what's the radius for with for it with the a of one, or so that would just be a proton because we don't we don't have anything exists that's just a neutron because then it couldn't have an electron orbiting around. So what would this be for a equals one? And you'll, what you find is. When you put a equals one, so equals one, r equals, and it's approximately. Let me remember this off the top of my head. I, oh yeah, it's one point four femtometers, or one point four times ten to the minus fifteen meters, which is a horribly long number to write out. So we just call this our zero. So we end up with a relationship of the form. So radius is equal to r zero a to the third, which is really nice because if we know the number of nucleons, we can work out what the radius of the nucleus would be, which is a good progression on from where we were before. Now. Let's move on to look at density of the nucleus, because we, we think of, obviously, the atom has the diameter of 1 angstrom, or 10 to the minus 10. If you think about it, when we do calculations about the mass of an atom, 
we're only ever interested in the number of protons, the number of neutrons, really. I mean, sometimes you might add in the number of electrons, but if you compare it to when you didn't include the electrons, you'd see it makes basically no difference. So we know that most of the mass is contained within the of an atom. So, if we've got the majority of the mass in the protons and neutrons, and those are right in the middle, this, this graph, uh, sorry, this diagram here, even is a terrible representation because this dot is way, way, way too big, but I'm afraid I can't do any smaller with the stylus pen that I'm using. I mean, one of the ways you're often told to imagine it is what if it would be like a golf ball in the middle of a giant football stadium. That's your size of your, your nucleus. So if you think about all that mass packed into this tiny, tiny volume in the center of your atom. What this does is it gives you the a massive nuclear, what we call nuclear density, or the density of your nucleus. So you get things of the order of 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed, which is crazy. If you think about the density of water, which is not that you know exactly the the least dense material, that's of the 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed, or a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. This is 10 to the 17, so that's 10 to the 14 times more dense than water. That's ridiculous. And so when you think about maybe you've learned about space topics and that sort of thing at, at school, and you would have learned about neutron stars, this gives you an indication just how dense those neutron stars are. Wow.